السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دس از ڈاکٹر نجم اینڈ آئی ہوپ یو آل آر فائن ان ایوری ایکسپیکٹ سو ٹوڈے از اوور ٹاپک از تھرمل فزکس وچ از تھیم ٹو آف دا کورس فائیو زیرو سیون زیرو فزکس او لیولس ان دس پرٹیکولر ٹاپکل وی ول ریزیوم دیز لرننگ آبجیکٹوس like uh, thermal expansion of solid liquid and gases measurement of temperature and as per the supplement we will explain and try to understand the motion and the arrangement of the molecules rel- the relative order of the magnitude of the expansion of solid liquid and gases so meanwhile these two highlighted content we will learn in the first part in today's lecture so it's uh, important to enhance your concepts please uh, watch this video till the end and uh, also subscribe the channel press the bell icon then you will get a regular notification whenever we upload a new video so also like share and if you have any query or you want to learn any topical so please comment below so let's start so first of all that we are talking about the temperature and heat and we know well about uh, these two quantities that is uh, heat is a form of energy right so this is a very simple thing that the heat is a form of energy and heat actually analyze uh, the basic quantitative measure okay and about the temperature temperature is actually what degree of hotness or coldness we can easily describe by mean of the temperature and uh, temperature is actually another a particular quantity that is uh, seven fundamental quantities apart with the si unit kelvin you know well and these two concepts like uh, heat and temperature if we apply in the kinetic particle theory that you people have already learned in the chemistry as well in the previous grades chapter number 1 states of matter so here is a point related about the motion of the particles in the solids liquid and gases as we know well one thing that energy will flow from a hotter object to a colder one and the particles in the hot object will lose kinetic energy whereas a particle in the cold object will gain the amount of energy right so what is exactly the kinetic energy kinetic energy is that energy which describes motion according to the formula of, of the kinetic energy we know that it relates with the mass of the particles and the velocity of the particles you know well one thing about uh, solids these particles are closely packed and usually in a regular pattern occupying minimal space large number of particles per unit volume and the most importantly solid particles vibrate about fixed positions and the particles are held in position by very strong attractive forces between the particles that is why we say that solids have definite shape and fixed volume but whenever we talking about the random arrangement of liquid molecules with the particles slightly further apart than in solids so slightly smaller number of particles per unit volume as compared to the solid which results in liquids having relative high density remember that and one more thing that particles are free to move about within the liquid 
and there are attractive forces between the particles. These attractive forces are stronger enough in your solids. And remember one thing, if our solid contains ionic lattice, or you can say an ionic compound, so that particular strong forces are generally termed as electrostatic forces. And in the terms of the covalent bond or covalent particular compounds, these forces are called intermolecular forces, right? And we know well one thing that energy will continue to flow until both objects reach the same temperature. Object at the same temperature will have the same average kinetic energy per particle. You know what? Whenever we observe the particles of gases in terms of uh, compared to the liquid and solids, so gases move randomly a very far apart from one another and a small number of particles per unit volume we observe about the gases. And the particles of gas have very little attraction between them, move randomly at very high speed. That's very important. And we observe one thing that whenever we heat or you can say we provide heat to the solids, so solid starts melting. And that particular melting criteria is actually what the conversion of solid into liquid state. And then finally, whenever we heat further to the liquid state, then your liquid converts into gas. And that particular particle, if it's a part of a gas, gains bulk amount of energy, and that energy will be utilized for increasing their speed. So we can say that this gas particles having more energy. That is why gas particles can able to move randomly. And also they have very little force of attraction between them. So there is no barrier, no junction through which we may control the speed of the gas particles because these particles having maximum kinetic energy as compared to solid and liquids. So there is a very common question. So this is a very common question is about uh, temperature and heat are same. Obviously no. Because temperature, as I tell you people earlier, that temperature is actually represents the degree of hotness or coldness. And heat is exactly form of energy. So <clears throat> that's the same reason. The beaker of the boiling water at the same temperature and the spoon of boiling water at 100 degree will have less thermal energy because in a spoon, we have less amount of quantity of matter. And in a beaker, we have greater amount of quantity in a beaker. So temperature is only telling about the quantitative analysis. And heat is actually telling about the qualitative analysis. Right? Remember that. Now let's talk about a uh, very important uh, factor. That is thermal expansion. What is exactly thermal expansion? Thermal expansion is that particular phenomena whenever we provide heat, especially for solids, because solid particles are compact arranged. And whenever we heat a solid sample, so solid particles gain energy and start to vibrate more vigorously, more, you can say, in speed. So we can take up a bit of space, all right? But it does not exactly looks like that whenever we try to heat the solid, so its size become greater to the greatest. It is not technically possible. 
ऑल दो दैट अब मिनिमम अमाउंट ऑफ यू कैन से स्पेस में गेन सो देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर कोफिशिएंट ऑफ एक्सपेंशन ऑफ डिफरेंट मटेरियल्स एंड एवरी मटेरियल हैविंग देयर थर्मल एक्सपेंशन कोफिशिएंट वैल्यू जस्ट लाइक ओवर हियर ग्लास कंक्रीट ब्रास स्टील एंड एल्युमिनियम सो एवरी सब्सटेंस in this world having a specific particular value right now liquids expand more when heated than solid the reason is same reason is same because liquid particles are actually a far apart and in the case of gases gases can expand more because although that gas particles don't have particular shape gas particles can move randomly gas particles have a very little force of attraction between their particles so they can able to move randomly without any issue or without any uh, restriction but we generally observe the concept of the thermal expansion in all of the states either solids either liquids and either gases and remember one thing these thermal expansion content related upon the three base quantities and they are what are these three base quantities pressure volume and temperature this is a kind of uh, you can say instrument through which we can easily observe the thermal expansion on heating this is exactly a setup contain a strong steel bar which is fixed within their apparatus frame by a large nut at one end and on the other side we have iron okay so when bar is heated the cast iron pack is now so that's what uh, we describe about this apparatus so this apparatus is actually used for observing the expansion and in this we can easily observe the expansion in any kind of uh, metallic uh, rods and something like that anything okay so these are the different examples through which we can actually observe thermal expansion and high speed planes are warmed by air so friction and get so longer so their structure is made by like this to minimize the air friction similarly that's a very main and very common uh, use of the rollers during the construction of the bridges that have gaps to allow for expansion especially in the uh, summer season so rollers may be used at one end so that the movement can take place and this roller is actually installed about uh, 500 or 400 meters over the patch similarly this diagram remember this diagram this diagram usually asked in your mcq so suspended overhead cables are left slack to allow for contraction that could happen on a very cold day and the criteria hot day just like uh, today feel was 45 degrees centigrade so if you observe the wires high tension wires so it was like that in data now the criteria of thermal expansion we generally used in your thermometer because thermometer contain mercury i hope you remember and even alcohol we use for laboratory grade thermometers 
so basically how do we measure temperature so the answer is very simple to measure temperature accurately we use instruments called thermometer so basically after thermometer there is a bimetallic strip and the bimetallic strip is actually one So the bimetallic strip is actually used that the bimetallic strip that is very important innovation as this bimetallic strip we generally use in different kind of appliances just like air conditioner, refrigerator, electric oven, heaters, iron. So in bimetallic strip, a low expansion metal just like uh, in war, it's an alloy, is bonded to a high expansion metal like brass. Okay, so as the strip is heated, the brass expands more than the invar, causing the strip bent. And uh, biometallic strips may be used in thermostats, devices for maintaining a steady temperature, such as in water heaters. Usually, this biometallic. Uh, question is usually asked in the MCQs. Okay, so remember that. Now, there is a mystery of the floating ice. We know that the ice floats on the surface of uh, water because of the lower density. And in liquid water, the water molecules are close together. In ice, the water molecules linked up and a very open structure that takes more space. And this is exactly hydrogen bonding is here. As I say, the density of the ice is lower than that of the liquid water. So ice floats on water easily. But uh, whenever we move the temperature from zero to four degree or four to zero degree, so basically, the water behavior is a slightly change, you can say. When we increase the temperature from zero to four degree, water actually contracts. And whenever we lower down the temperature from four to zero degree, water is actually expands. So this is called anomalous expansion. Now, thermal expansion and gases. We know well, using the apparatus below, a fixed volume of a gas is heated. And whenever we try to change the temperature, whenever we try to change the pressure or volume, any one of the quantity, so definitely the other quantities may also affect, right? This graph is related about a relation between temperature and volume. Okay, temperature and volume relationship. So, according to this graph, whenever we increase the temperature, whenever we increase the pressure, so definitely temperature will be increased. Remember that. Whenever we increase the temperature, it will affect the volume, it will affect the pressure. Because when we increase the temperature, so particles will gain energy. Whenever particles will gain energy, so automatically their movement, their motion becomes faster. And as molecules move faster, they will collide more frequently with the walls of the container. Automatically, 
will affect on your gas volume and your gas pressure okay so there is a concept of the absolute zero so remember one thing the absolute zero is actually zero kelvin and zero kelvin is equals to minus 273 so there is a relation between pressure and temperature for a fixed mass of a gas at constant volume the pressure is directly proportional to kelvin temperature kelvin is your si unit si unit of temperature quantity so that is exactly how we made this formula and how can we apply the formula remember that in the physics the temperature is always taken as in kelvin we add 273 and we convert degree centigrade into kelvin Now, that's about the Charles law. Charles law represents a relation between volume and temperature. And according to the Charles law, for a fixed mass of a gas at constant pressure, the volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin or absolute temperature. Right? If we have degree centigrade temperature, so we can easily convert our temperature from degree centigrade to Kelvin. And we have a lot of examples, just like uh, when car is moving, the tire gets heated. This causes the temperature of the air in the tire rise. So definitely, according to the kinetic model of gas, a rise in temperature of air causes an increase in average speed of the air molecules that actually affect the volume. Right, and this is its mathematical application. So, that is exactly what we have done today about the thermal expansion. And I hope uh, you better understand this topical content. So that's enough for today. Inshallah, in the next session, we will start from the temperature measurement and uh, another law that's a pressure volume relationship. So, till then, take care of yourself. This is Dr. Najam signing out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.